hello dear friends and today let's continue with the vaccination series and let's learn something about hepatitis b vaccination okay now let's start coming to the introduction in introduction let's discuss what is the need for this vaccination to be included under our national immunization schedule or under the iap why is the government stressing so much on this vaccination okay one first is the sequel of acute viral hepatitis that can happen when it comes to hepatitis b infection correct acute viral hepatitis can further progress and land up in chronic viral hepatitis where they might stay just as the carriers of the infection or they can further progress when they can land up in chronic liver disease correct or they can land up with hepatocellular carcinoma correct so that is the need correct second the one more thing is the just a second among the indians there are around 2 to 4% of the indians 2 to 4% of the indians are in this stage correct are in this stage 2 to 4% of indians are in this stage chronic viral hepatitis they are carriers of the <coughs> virus correct so again there might be horizontal and transmission that is taking place that is why the need for this vaccination that keeps our country in at intermediate endemicity okay then it can as well progress to hepatocellular carcinoma and this is the most common type of primary liver cancer in india okay then zero positivity what is the other need among indian women it is the incidence is around 2.9% around 3% okay and these women if they are infected around there is around 10 to 85% risk of infectivity in the childhood based on hepatitis b e antigen status based on the that status in the women there is around 10 to 85% risk of infectivity in the childhood okay and if this children ends up getting infected around 90% of them become chronic carriers okay and around 25% will die of chronic liver disease by adulthood or hepatocellular carcinoma that is why the need of this vaccination okay next let's see something about the vaccine what is the type of vaccine it is a recombinant vaccine produced using the recombinant dna technology with yeast with yeast okay next when was it introduced it was introduced in 1986 fine what is the active sus uh, substance in it hepatitis b surface antigen next what is the adjuvant used aluminum salt what is the preservative used thiomersal then it has to be stored under 2 to 8 degrees celsius but what is important is it is cold sensitive if at all it is freezed then we will have to discard the vaccine we will have to discard the vaccine so do not freeze the vaccine okay but it is relatively heat stable okay relatively heat stable and it is available both as monovalent and polyvalent vaccine okay fine next let's look into the dose if it is in children or adolescents we will have to give 0.5 ml or 10 micrograms if it is greater than 18 years okay greater than 18 years then we give 1 ml or 20 micrograms just double the dose double the dose okay next how do we administer the vaccine intramuscular it has to be and on the anterolateral aspect of the thigh or deltoid okay and never give it in the buttocks region never give it in the buttocks region okay if at all it is given in the buttocks region immunogenicity is very low so we'll have to repeat we'll have to repeat that particular vaccine okay that particular vaccine we'll have to repeat when it comes to hepatitis b now let's see the schedule so the best and the preferred schedule is 0 1 and 6 months this is the best and the preferred schedule because the immune response is best when it is given this way when it is given this way but due to certain programmatic purpose for our national immunization schedule so that it fits into it so that it can be given as polyvalent dose we usually give so that we do not have to call the parents again and again it is best given as 0 6 10 and 14 weeks okay first dose is always monovalent no matter what vaccine it is the birth dose that is given at birth it has to be given as monovalent okay no matter what vaccine it is 
just not the hepatitis B. For it, any vaccine to be given as polyvalent, we'll have to wait for six weeks, okay? Or else the immune response will not be good. So at birth, everything that is given is as a monovalent, okay? So the birth dose is monovalent followed by mono or polyvalent vaccine can be given. Either combined vaccine can be given or single vaccine can be given at 6, 10 and 14 weeks, okay? What about other schedules? There are various schedules that can be followed like 0, 6 and 14 weeks can be followed, 6, 10 and 14 weeks can be followed or 0, 6 weeks and 6 months can be followed. So basically 3 doses of vaccine are enough, 3 doses of vaccine are enough. In India we give 4 under national immunization schedule for programmatic purpose, okay, so that we can fit it into the schedule. Next, birth dose in an unexposed individuals should preferably give, be given within 24 hours to prevent the transmission from child from the mother to the child in case of exposed individual within 12 hours within 12 hours we'll have to give okay next ideally what is the minimum interval minimum interval between dose 1 and dose 2 ideally should be 4 weeks and between dose 2 and dose 3 should be 8 weeks okay the longer the gap between the dose 2 and dose 3 better the immune response hence ideally it has to be 8 weeks okay so final dose should be completed within as a whole if we start at birth final dose should be completed within 24 weeks of age okay and at least 16 day weeks after dose one we among this whichever is later whichever is later we'll have to follow okay next who are called as responders once we give vaccine if antibody titers are greater than 10 million international units per liter they are called as responders okay so a minimum of one month gap should be given after completion of vaccine series and after that we can check for response and in whom all we check usually we check in a healthcare worker we'll have to go ahead and check in infants born to mother who is positive in infants born to mother who is positive we'll have to check after completion of vaccine series with the minimum of one month gap post completion and it can be checked in immunocompromised, okay, immunocompromised. So these three categories, we'll have to go ahead and check for the response, okay. Then what about catch-up vaccination? It can be administered to all. Whoever is not vaccinated of any age group, we can go ahead and administer this vaccine. Schedule remains 0, 1 and 6 months, okay. Now let's look at the protection that is offered by the vaccine to us, okay. So after three dose vaccine series, Protective antibody concentration of greater than 90% occurs in healthy infants, children and young adults. So among, if antibody is given, around 95% of the population will respond provided they are healthy, okay. So what if they are not healthy, that means in immunocompromised or with those with comorbidities, the immune response might not be that good. That is why the need over here, as mentioned, we'll have to go ahead and check for the antibody titers, okay, periodically check for the titers and further decide on booster dose depending on the titers if it is less than 10 we can go ahead and give booster doses okay then what is the duration of protection that the antibody offers the titers itself may remain up to 22 years even if the titers decrease in healthy individual there is lifelong immunity because of the immune memory and the anamnestic response that is produced by the immune system okay what about adverse effect following immunization? Very mild local reaction, anaphylaxis, fever and fatigue can take place. When it comes to contraindication, again, any anaphylaxis to previous vaccine of hepatitis B is a contraindication, okay. Then comes vaccine in certain special category people, okay. So one is infants born to hepatitis B positive mother. In them, let's see, in them, let's see, okay. First, we go ahead and assess mother status. If mother status is unknown, first we go provide hepatitis B vaccine within 12 hours of birth. Okay, within 12 hours of birth we provide. Then if it is negative, we don't, don't, we don't have to do anything. Later, if we get to know that mother is positive, then hepatitis B immunoglobulin should preferably be administered within 48 hours. Within 48 hours and may be given up to 7 days of birth. Okay, but it within 48 hours is what is preferred. Okay. Then if the hepatitis B antigen status is known, okay, mother is positive, okay. If immunoglobulin is available and the patient parties are affordable, 
then we'll have to give vaccination with hepatitis b immunoglobulin within 12 hours of birth okay this is followed by routine schedule of vaccination if we do this there is around 85 to 95 percent chances of prevention of infection in the children okay if it is unavailable or the patient parties are not affordable then we'll have to go ahead with vaccination 0 1 month 2 month and 9 to 12 months okay then if this is followed then the protection offered is around 70 to 75 percent so this much 70 to 75 percent children can be prevented from getting hepatitis b okay from the mother then after doing this as mentioned we'll have to check for antibody titers okay so check baby's hvsag antigen check whether the baby has got hepatitis b from the mother and hvsag antibodies at the age of 9 to 15 months okay at the age of 9 to 15 months we'll have to one we'll have to assess the response okay to the vaccination second we'll have to check the hvsag antigen status in the children if they have acquired the infection from the mother they'll turn out to be positive and they'll end up being carriers nothing can be done to them okay if the antibody titus is greater than 10 million international units per liter then good they are responded to the vaccine again nothing has to be done to them they will have lifelong immunity if provided they are healthy if the antibody titers are less than 10 million international units then we'll have to see what we have to do correct so at that time either one single dose of vaccine can be given and then assessed for response or they can be offered again one more full full vaccination series one more full vaccination series zero one six months vaccination series can be offered to them either one of them can be done after this we again assess the response if they turn out to be hvsag antigen positive nothing can be done if it is greater than 10 then good they have responded but again if they end up having antibody titers less than 10 then again we repeat either one more second dose of vaccine or again we can repeat the whole vaccine series whole vaccine series can be repeated 0 1 and 6 can be repeated okay now even after this two times repetition of this whole vaccine series or a single separate booster dose if the response is less then we term them as non-responder we term them as non-responder and in these people all we can do is each time they are exposed to hepatitis b positive individuals or their blood or sera whenever they get exposed we'll have to give them post exposure prophylaxis okay if they have good response then responders if they are positive carriers okay that is to how we approach a child exposed to hepatitis b positive mother okay how do we give immunoglobulin in vaccination it has to be given at two different sites okay and in two different syringes hepatitis b immunoglobulin can be given up to seven days okay but after 48 hours if given the response how the individual responds to it it is not known how the hepatitis b immunoglobulin is going to function in the child the efficacy of it is not known but that is why it was mentioned over here give within 48 hours okay then let's see about preterm infants or low birth weight infants now what is the problem is in infants less than 2 kg there is decreased response when the vaccination is given within one month okay because the immune system is not mature enough so if the mother is hepatitis b negative then nothing needs to be done we just skip the bird dose and give that particular dose at 30 days of life okay and after that we carry further with the normal schedule as the term infants okay we, as term infants we follow the schedule the only thing is bird dose is given at one month 30 days of life if mother is hepatitis B positive, what do we do with that time? That time we administer vaccine along with immunoglobulin within 12 hours of life. We end up giving the vaccination, but the thing is we do not count the bird dose as part of vaccination series. Okay, after one month we again do give the whole four dose immunizations as per our national immunization schedule. But only thing is bird dose is not counted. Bird dose will be the first dose will be counted from 30 days of life okay then again we'll have to check antibody response and hepatitis b antigen status four weeks after completion of vaccine series okay fine next what do we do in ckd people 
or chronic kidney disease, immunocompromised, they are elderly. In these people, because we cannot rely on their immune system, what we do is we give a four dose vaccination series at 0, 1, 2 and 12 months. After that, we after for this thing, we will have to check for the antibody response. But the dose what we give is double the usual dose. We give double the usual dose. Okay. What do we do in healthcare workers? In healthcare workers, okay, we follow something called as accelerated schedule. Okay, dose one, we give a gap of four weeks, then dose two, we give a gap of eight weeks after dose two, and we go ahead and give dose three. Then one to two months after the last dose of vaccine, we'll have to go and test for what is the response. Okay, anti HBSG antibody response we'll have to check for in these healthcare workers. Okay, now let's see about hepatitis B immunoglobulin. Till now we were talking about the active immunity. Now we will think talk about passive immunity. Now what is the dose? 0 0.06 ml per kg in adults. If it's in case of neonates and infants, it is 0.5 ml. It is stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The duration of protection it offers is 3 to 6 months. In case of non-responders, that is we have already read who are non-responders, who have not responded after two complete schedules. Okay. <coughs> in them we offer post exposure prophylaxis the thing is usually we offer single dose correct but in them we give two doses of hepatitis b immunoglobulin one month apart okay fine it's fine so now we read about hepatitis b immunoglobulin now coming to the last part post exposure prophylaxis now what if a healthcare worker is exposed to a hepatitis b individual okay if he is unvaccinated, if he or she is unvaccinated, then we give hepatitis B immunoglobulin plus begin the new vaccination series for that person. Okay, but if he is fully vaccinated, then what do we do? If we know that he is a known responder, if he has responded, then nothing at all needs to be done. Okay, if his antibody titers are unknown, we have not assessed his antibody titers post that full immunization series, then we should check his antibody status. Okay. If it is adequate, that it, if it is greater than 10, then we don't have to treat it. If it is inadequate, then we'll have to give one dose of hepatitis B immunoglobulin plus one booster hepatitis B vaccination has to be given. Okay. Then next, if he is given, we have given three doses and he is a known responder. If you have given three, three doses and he is a known non-responder, not sorry, not responder, and he is a known non-responder. We know what is non-responder. Correct. Then we give hepatitis B immunoglobulin and begin a new vaccination series. Okay. If six doses is given and still he is not responded, still he is not responded, then we give hepatitis B immunoglobulin. Then we give instead of a single instead of the new full new vaccination series, we give dose one and one month later we give dose two. Two doses we give instead of the three new vaccination series. Okay, three dose vaccination series. So that's all with hepatitis B. It was quite long and confusing also. So please go through the video once again. Okay. Fine. Thank you.